Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. Up next, we've got the pilot for a TV series that has 201 episodes, a very successful television series. The series aired from 1957 to 1962. The pilot, however, aired in 1956 in with an anthology series. The series is titled Tales of Wells Fargo. This episode is titled a tale of Wells Fargo. This is the first time that Jim Hardy saddles up and rides after the bad guys. Our stars are Dale Robertson, Helen Westcott, Ray Teal, Stuart Randall, and Paul Fix. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this. And we'll see you after the show. Combination. I said open it. I can't. The only one that can open the safe is the Wells Fargo agent in New York. Stay away, everybody. Hey, Sam. These boxes are heavy. First it was our offices, then the stagecoaches, now it's the trains. It's got to stop. We've got to teach these outlaws it isn't healthy to rob Wells Fargo. We've also got to teach them that it's unhealthy to kill a Wells Fargo man, too. Wells Fargo is more than just an express company, it's an institution. We've built solidly. The name of our company has come to mean something. Safety, security. We've got to safeguard that reputation, and the law, too. The trouble of it is, there isn't any law in half the places we operate, except the law of a gun. Mind you, I got a good, healthy respect for the law. Fight for it and defend it whenever it's possible. If it isn't, we got to use their rules. 
and their laws. Company's behind you, Jim. Whatever it costs, you've got to bring in these outlaws. Or make sure they never rob another Wells Fargo strongbox. Anywhere. It took me a couple of days to get up north. I rode the same train, the old Sierra. That's the one they put their dynamite to. I talked to the station agent and the conductor, and it was what I suspected. Every holdup has a brand. And this time, it sure looked like the Haggerty crowd. But no one knew for sure who Haggerty was. All we knew was that we'd lost many a strong box in this part of the country. And Haggerty's name somehow seemed to crop up and be connected with it. It was said he held ground in the section called the Hole in the Wall Country. I wasn't far from it, I was sure. With what I had learned already from the station agent and knowing Haggerty's breed, I felt sure I was on the trail of the strong box. Shoot it out. You're trespassing on private property. Yours? No, my father's. And we don't like strangers around here. I don't know the custom around here, ma'am. But where I come from... I don't care where you come from. Did you come back to see if you missed something? <laughs> I see what you mean. I'm afraid you got the wrong customer. I wasn't one of the lucky ones. Here they got 20,000 in cash. Well, as far goes a big company. They can afford it. Some people believe in spreading the wealth around, you know. You're one of those people. Didn't say I was. Didn't say I wasn't either. Never had a chance to make my mind up about that. Never had 20,000 looking me in the face. Never had a girl like you looking me in the face either. Make the 20,000 look like chicken feet. Cross outside, mister. Water's what you wash your face with. You want that filled with whiskey? I got a long way to ride. And I don't ride so good on water. Cost you ten dollars. Ten dollars? I never paid more than five dollars to have that filled up in my life. Maybe with rock cut, mister. How much do you get per shot? Two bits. All right. Give me 20 drinks. Go ahead, give me 20 glasses. I get crazy people in here all the time, but I'm a Paiute if you ain't the...
Look, if 20 people came in in order to drink, you'd give them 20 glasses, wouldn't you? Yeah. All right, give me 20 glasses. Look, mister, if you want to play games, do it yourself. All right, I will. There's one. You can help me count it. One. You're getting out of order, mister. That's two. Two. Hello, Sheriff. Marshal, you want whiskey to take out, buy a bottle. That's three. I don't want a bottle. Just want this canteen full. Look out. I'll pay up and get out. How much? Well, three and the one to spill, that makes a dollar. I don't pay for whiskey somebody else spills. You pay. You sleep in jail tonight. Judge, partner, Macklin the Barb is just the man to make you look pretty. Yes, sir. Won't hurt you a bit. Used to set bones at all the gulfs. Never had a complaint from a customer. All right. Give me a haircut. Fine. Only cost you two bits. Marshal, one haircut coming up. I'll be back before you're finished. The Frisco office wrote that you might be showing up around here. Yeah, I saw you on a road in town yesterday. That's why I kicked up such a ruckus in the saloon. You sure picked a hard way to talk to me. The marshal swings a heavy gun, huh? What about that marshal? What do you know about it? Oh, he's all right. I think. You think? But you're not sure. I'm not sure of anything anymore. I came out here after the hole in the wall gang. Yeah. Tried to get something out of that railroad agent. He clammed up. Seemed afraid every time I mentioned him. They've got friends, spies, that's obvious. They wouldn't be able to operate around here as long as they have if people hadn't been working with them. The trouble is, nobody knows who their Confederates are. A railroad detective came out here about a year or so ago. They picked up his body about four miles west of town. I've got two names. Marty Haggerty and Sim Rosser. What do you know about them? Well, there's been a hole in the wall gang since before there was a town here. Maybe not the same bunch as are in the crowd today, but nobody knows. Names have been dropped and whispered. Haggerty, Rosser. Maybe there are men by those names. I don't know. Maybe they use other names. Smith, Jones, Johnson. Johnson? There's a man named Johnson, Link Johnson. Has a horse ranch west of town. People in town never say much when he's around. Maybe he's mixed up in this gang. And then again, maybe he ain't. And he's got a daughter named Bess Johnson. I don't know much about Johnson. But be careful if you ride west. Say, that's looking pretty good. You think you can get me out of here? Say, you face the judge looking neat like this now, but he lets you off with a little old $25 fine. Hey, Marshal. You'd like to pay your fine now and get going? Or you want to hang around and get a free breakfast? I don't think I'll hang around. Get the free breakfast. You can give me a shave, too. Well, fine.
Now don't bother to light that stranger. There's nothing here you want. Well, I just stopped by to water my horse. I don't believe I've ever seen such an unfriendly country. Seems we just don't take the strangers, going or coming. I thought you'd be heading for the mountains. You know him? I ran into him yesterday on our property, South Trail. Yeah, with a rifle in her hand. If only look at him to know what he is. You'll be selling him a horse pretty soon. Mister, I've been living here a long time. I like it. I mind my own business. Now you can keep on riding or turn around and go back. It don't make no difference to me so long as you don't stop here. Now get. Just one more thing. Yeah? How far is it to the hole in the wall country? You weren't wanted here. Here we go again. Yeah. You're the only one who's going to go. Away from here. Fast. You said your father would sell me a fresh horse. That's why I came back. I need one. We've no horses for sale. But you just said to your father. My father isn't here. But clear out. I've seen enough of you. He lit out of here right after I did. Which way did he go? Towards Green River or the hole in the wall? I'm going to say just one more thing to you. For the last time. Get. Get out of here if you know what's good for you. Don't be a fool. I'm not here alone. We've got two men working. <laughs> sure. That's why they just let me ride up without bothering to stop me. You know, you really tried to shoot me. Detective. Up to now, you've been calling me an outlaw. There's no difference. You're a little mixed up, aren't you? First, you're against me because you think I'm an outlaw. Now, you're against me because you think I'm a detective. One's as bad as the other. I'm really just trying to help you. You believe me now? There's two horses. You better start riding. I wouldn't get far. He's all through. You haven't got time for a fresh horse. The barn. your chance. I still need a fresh horse. All right, take one. The bay mare's the fastest. Where do you stand in this? Those men are outlaws, yet you're helping me get away. You haven't got time to stand here and argue. Those were your father's men. If they find out you're helping me, and if I'm a detective, you'll be in trouble. I can take care of myself. Is your father in with him? No. He rode out of here right after I left. It's obvious he didn't go to the mountains or to come back with them. Must have gone to Green River. Just go. I've said too much already. Go, please. 
you are in trouble. It's too late. I spotted him all right. Dad, no. The boys think he's the Wells Fargo man. What of it? That's no concern of yours. You're not one of them. Well, I never rode with them, no, but I sold them horses. I knew what they were doing. I give them information. Now you're going to kill for them. He was the man you wanted. His real name is Marty Haggerty. I didn't shoot him. My father did. Your father? Your father isn't even here. If he was, I'd have to take him in. I've got a lot to thank you for. And I still say you make 20,000 look like chicken feet. Goodbye, Ben. Buried under the floor of his office. <laughs> it's a pretty safe place, the marshal's office. Yeah. I just got Macklin's report. He says there's talk now that no one's afraid anymore that there was a girl mixed up in that gang. A girl? Yeah, someone named Johnson. Macklin figured her father was a member of the gang. Yeah. I investigated Johnson. He's all right. Besides, you got the gold back, the gang's busted up. The case is closed, isn't it? Yeah, the case is closed. Knowing you, Jim, I'll, I'll bet if there was a girl, she was a good looker, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she was prettier than 
$20,000 in gold. Wasn't that a wonderful episode of classic television? It's no wonder this series launched and was so successful with Dale Robertson, one of the biggest stars Hollywood has ever seen. Will Rogers Jr. gave Dale some really good advice. He said, don't ever take a dramatic lesson. They'll try to wrap your voice and put it in a dinner jacket. And folks like their hominy and grits served up in plain clothes. So Dale took his advice and stayed away from formal acting lessons. Thanks for joining us for the Forsaken Westerns. We hope you'll join us again here next time. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great day.